The threat of climate change to humanity, as well as nature, has spurred multiple organizations to invest millions of dollars in the study of the causes of climate change. Climate scientists are modeling past climate events in an effort to understand how future climate conditions may affect different regions of the globe. These models are being developed to provide insight to whether we can slow climate change and identify what types of climate change may be imminent so that we can adapt to them. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and hundreds of scientists have made significant contributions to understanding how people are affecting climate. Although there is still debate over how much of current climate change is being driven by people, most climate scientists agree that climate change is occurring and it threatens the homes, businesses, and lives of billions of people around the world. The natural forces of climate change are fairly varied and there's a long history of the Earth going through various glacial periods and interglacial periods. And a lot of that appears to be driven by the orbital position of the Earth relative to the Sun and how that orbit varies over time. When the Earth is positioned most closely to the Sun, is it occurring during the winter period or during the summer period? And then on an annual basis, whether the orbit of the Earth is varying to any great extent, because sometimes it's a circular orbit and other times it's more of an elliptical orbit. And that will be one of the main forcing mechanisms associated with climate change. For over 100 years, scientists have been studying how changes in the Sun's intensity and Earth's orbit around the Sun have affected climate on Earth. Portions of the ancient landscape provide clues to the extent of ice sheets during past glaciations. Other features, like ancient coral on high terraces, can be used to reconstruct sea level at different times in the past. Proxy data can range from fossils of animals and plants that formerly lived in a region to air bubbles deep within ice cores. This data is used to reconstruct past environmental conditions on the principle of uniformitarianism. That is the understanding that if animals and plants survive in a certain environment today, where their fossils are recovered must reflect the same type of environment in ancient times. Scientific studies of relict features on the landscape, as well as other forms of proxy data, indicate that over the past 2.2 million years, Ice ages have come and gone, as have the warmer interglacial periods that separated them. This lake was actually formed by a glacier that used to cover this landscape about 18,000 years ago. And the glacier would have been roughly about a half a mile thick in this location. And the lake that you're viewing in the background behind me was actually created by the glacier. It was moving over the landscape. It would have been basically tearing up the earth beneath it as it moved, because it's a huge mass of weight and the ice actually plucks at the Earth as it uh, moves across to the south. And it would have started up in the Arctic and moved south was the climate cooled during the last glaciation. And you get this type of feature afterwards, including the rock that you see in the lake, which would be a large boulder that may have been carried down here as far as a place like, say, Finland. And the uh, moraine that you see off to my far left is called a drumlin and that's a large mass of boulders that are left behind, unsorted. The climate does change over time, and that the climate change that we're moving into now is a part of a cycle of change that has occurred over hundreds of thousands of years. These types of cycles of climate change are actually driven by something that's called orbital parameters or celestial mechanics, which is basically how the Earth actually orbits around the sun. Reconstructions of the last interglacial 125,000 to 115 years ago, indicate the temperate forests grew as far north as Greenland. Sea level was six meters higher than present, and Earth's landscape was vastly different than it is today. But still, little is known about how quickly sea level rose during the last interglacial, or how quickly it subsided as Earth moved into the last ice age, 115,000 years ago. Until we understand how quickly or how slowly the Earth responded to climate change during the transition from past glacial to interglacial periods and back again, we can't really understand how quickly climate change will occur into the next century.
regardless of what is causing climate change. It seems clear that it is occurring. And most evidence indicates we will not be able to stop portions of the Arctic and Antarctic ice sheets from melting or stop some areas of permafrost in the reaches of the far north from thawing. Over the next 50 to 100 years, these forces alone can cause significant changes in Earth's landscape. Coupled ocean atmosphere climate models developed by leading climate scientists indicate that a rapid influx of fresh water into the Arctic and Antarctic oceans from melting ice can change oceanic circulation patterns which would result in changes in atmospheric circulation across the far reaches of the globe. We cannot stop the natural forces of climate change. Forces driven by the sun and cyclic changes in Earth's orbit around the sun, as well as changes in Earth's tilt on its axis. Climate change is natural, but it is nothing to fear if we plan well. At Western Harbor, Malmo city planners have planned for up to two meters, six feet, of sea level rise. But if sea level rises as high as it did during the last interglacial, the lower levels of this beautiful community will be underwater. As such, there is ample time to modify the protective rock barricade that buffers the community from the crashing waves of winter storms. These rock barricades and the waterways and check dams that surround the community can easily be raised to protect Western Harbor from even higher sea level if needed. If we reduce the amount of pollutants we pump into the atmosphere and the acres of landscape we deforest, we can reduce our effect on climate change and create a better world. One of the things that's going to be fundamentally important is to understand what our role is. And irrespective of whether we are, as humans, creating carbon emissions which are affecting our climate and causing global warming, we need to be good stewards of the environment that we have. And being a good steward simply means that we have to be thinking very carefully before we start using, exploiting and overusing the materials that we have available to us.